Designing a floor plan is more than just a simple space planning exercise. It's an intricate three-dimensional puzzle that has to be expressed in two-dimensional space with many dynamic factors. I'm Sharif Asiri, owner and designer of Asiri Designs. Today I'm going to go over how I approach designing floor plans for Northwest Living and some of the things that I'm always thinking about when doing so. I always start diagramming over an existing condition site plan. This lets me understand how the home will be integrated into the site's topography and determine the most ideal orientation for the structure. I also always do a site analysis in the pre-design phase prior to even starting any floor plan diagrams in order to understand the site's restrictions and advantageous features. I have an entire video on how to conduct a site analysis available up here. This specific site is heavily forested with steep topography and is divided by a small creek that runs through the center of the property. We also have a fairly narrow front property line to the south of the site, coupled by the required side setbacks which you can see in the secondary dashed line. These factors limit where we can position a driveway and where we can build a home. Generally, we want to select the flattest part of the site to build on if possible, as it will reduce the amount of site prep such as regrading and excavation. Before drawing any kind of floor plan diagrams, it is imperative that you and your design professional come up with a program list of desired rooms with approximate sizes and a rough square footage range based on the budget. This will help you to quickly assess whether a design will be feasible without spending expensive design fees, only to learn that you couldn't afford to build it in the first place. For more information on early budgeting and programming, check out the link to my article in the description. For this site, I'm aiming for roughly 3,400 square feet, including the garage. I started with blocking out a 20 foot by 22 foot rectangle, which will serve as the two car garage. It's important that we draw this first, as this will need to be at the front of the structure due to the site's constraints. I also sketched in a sizable paved area which extends to the proposed retaining wall so that cars backing out of the garage will be able to turn around instead of having to back out 50 to 75 feet. The next block that I sketched out adjacent to the garage is dedicated to our entry sequences and the various services that we might need to use or access when entering the structure. For example, located at the front door, I've shaded in a large linear coat closet or storage closet. At the entry from the garage, I'm allocating a sizable space to the mechanical room as it's easier to access from the garage level while still being within the conditioned space for energy efficiency. I've also located a powder room which has been tucked away from the main living area, but it's close enough to both entries and the living area for convenience. The living area block is an open plan, combining the living room, dining, and kitchen all together into one long multi-use space. At the wall facing the living area, I've shaded in a large fireplace wall, something that I believe every Pacific Northwest resident should have, and which is often enjoyed by my clients. There's just something about a fireplace that creates such an incredible ambiance in a space, especially in the Northwest. Because there are views of the forest and the creek, it will be nice to have a large bank of floor-to-ceiling windows on the east elevation. Something that I also find really nice to have in the Pacific Northwest is a partially covered deck or patio. This creates a strong indoor-outdoor connection where you can enjoy listening to the rain, dining outdoors during the warmer months, or letting your home passively ventilate while staying dry and protected from the weather. The last block that I sketched out is allocated to more private spaces such as bedroom suites and a multi-use recreational room, along with a laundry room. Sectioning off the bedroom blocks into more of an annex space helps to emphasize the separation of private and more public spaces within the house, which is especially useful if you're entertaining guests. Each bedroom will have views of the forest as well, strengthening the connection to the site and creating a serene experience of waking up to the site of a tree canopy and the soft filtered light every morning. We will need a retaining wall across the west elevation as well as a way to deal with the storm water. Having a continuous planter with a gravel path will help this water drain quickly and will be an aesthetically pleasing solution, especially if we come back later and add some bullet lights or path lights to eliminate the shrubs along the wall. After we move past the diagramming phase, it's time to start hard lighting these drawings to scale in CAD. We go through another set of iterations with these digitally drawn plans, making small tweaks and edits while cross-referencing the elevations and sections to better understand these three-dimensional relationships. Walls are drawn to the framing dimensions in most cases and referenced in our wall schedule and details. We also need to be showing the size and locations of casework, appliances, plumbing fixtures, mechanical systems, overhead objects like drop beams, and more. While these are just the basics, there can be a lot more information on a floor plan, with the size and complexity of the building determining how much information will be required to accurately describe how to construct the home. If there is one takeaway from this video, it's that floor plans need to be site-specific and client-specific. In the Pacific Northwest, the site and the local landscape usually provide a very strong source of inspiration, with each location presenting unique design opportunities. 
When designing floor plans, it's crucial to be thinking in three dimensions, always referencing the topography of the site, the elevations and sections, and iterating often to create a refined, well thought out design. If you found this peek into the design process helpful or interesting, please consider subscribing or signing up for our newsletter. It's completely free. We put out new content every single week, whether it's about designing in the Northwest, construction materials, building science, or other architecture or design related topics.